When Real Madrid won the Champions League in 2022, many people found it hard to believe. The La Liga winners were a bit lucky to win the competition, according to Manchester City CEO Ferran Soriano. Not only this, but in his opinion, they deserve to lose against PSG, Chelsea and Liverpool as well. Now, looking at the knockout games, it's not hard to see where the idea that Madrid got lucky came from. In the 660 minutes that they played after the group stages on their way to lifting the trophy, Madrid were only leading for 142 minutes, most notably making a famous comeback late on against Manchester City. But there is a tactical aspect that underpins this discussion. Of those four teams that Madrid beat in the knockout stages, all four of them look to control games to varying degrees. For Pep Guardiola's Manchester City and Thomas Tuchel's Chelsea, control is probably more instrumental than it is for Maurizio Pochettino's PSG or Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. But for all four teams, they will look to control the ball through possession and win it back quickly once they lose it through counter-pressure. Now against this backdrop, Carlo Ancelotti's Real Madrid are a different prospect. Although they had the players to be able to control possession, what they lacked was a functional pressing system to win the ball high up the pitch. Instead, they were happy to let opponents dictate the game, sitting deeper and absorbing pressure before putting up short spells of intense activity in the opposition third, which led to goals through their elite attacking options. From an aesthetic point of view, this approach may look lucky, and it can't be denied that two goals in three minutes at the end of the second leg against Manchester City is fortuitous, but Ancelotti's strategy continued to work throughout the competition, raising questions about the role that tactics play at elite clubs. A general consensus seems to have emerged that elite football clubs need to employ increasingly tactically complex systems in order to compete at the highest levels. We might call this the Pep Guardiola effect. Since Guardiola took control of Barcelona's first team in 2008, his ideas about the game have unquestionably influenced the world of football. Fundamental to these ideas is the sense that a football coach should manage every aspect of a match so that every eventuality can be accounted for, reducing the impact that randomness can have on a game. Guardiola wants to see his teams carefully manage possession, those moments when his team are out of possession, and the transitional moments when his teams win or lose possession too. By adopting this approach, the idea is that a football manager should be able to create a system which allows the players to get the best outcomes. The system should be greater than the sum of their parts. But what happens when those parts are the best football players in the world? This is a problem that has been repeatedly raised by Real Madrid with their Galacticos approach to football. Galacticos is a Spanish word that means superstars. The term was applied to the recruitment strategy employed by Florentino Perez, the Real Madrid president, during his first stint in charge at the club between the years of 2000 and 2006. During that time, Perez brought in players like Zinedine Zidane, Luis Figo, Ronaldo and David Beckham in a bid to build the best team in the world. Bringing together the best players in the world has raised questions about how useful complex tactical systems can be at the elite level. On the one hand, coaches have found that it's hard to motivate elite players to act in the best interests of the whole team. This is a problem that successive Paris Saint-Germain managers have found when it comes to playing Lionel Messi, Neymar and Kylian Mbappe in the same front three. A system manager might want their forward line to press high, starting the team's defensive work from the front. If they don't, then the manager might have little option other than to change their style of play. On the other hand, having the best players in the world can mean that coaches get a tremendous amount of upside from individual moments. Throughout Real Madrid's Champions League campaign, they were repeatedly relying on moments of magic from players like Karim Benzema, Luka Modric or Vinicius Jr. Where their systems may afford space and time to less talented players, the very best players can create simply through their own individual brilliance. Bring these two aspects together and it's fair to ask whether or not system-heavy approaches should always be the course of action adopted by elite sides. Of course, it's hard to argue against Pep Guardiola's results over the course of a league season. In those instances, a system-based approach might give you the edge over a competitive league. But in knockout tournaments, variance plays a much higher role, 
And that is where a less systematic approach might have its benefits. Carlo Ancelotti is famous for his quip that his footballing philosophy is that he has no philosophy. This is clearly a rhetorical embellishment, and it's probably more correct to say that Ancelotti implements a basic structure that allows his players the framework to showcase their incredible talents without being so stringent as to suffocate them. This basic structure has other advantages. Without a stringent tactical philosophy in place, Ancelotti is able to make impromptu in-game tweaks that can surprise opposition coaches, something which is useful in competition play. Before Real Madrid won the Champions League in 2022, a consensus seemed to have been reached. Elite sides needed system coaches if they were to succeed in the premier European competition. But in the wake of Madrid's defeat of Liverpool, that new consensus looks less convincing than it once did. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. Not to mention, it's all ad-free. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.